Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. And today we're going to be answering the question of why is there an altimeter on a submarine? So we are visiting the submarine USS Pacuna, SS319, which is a museum ship you can visit in Philadelphia. So she's right across the river from Battleship New Jersey. Uh, she's part of the Independent Seaport Museum collection and uh, both museums sell a combined ticket and we even do some combined tours uh, if you're interested in visiting both in one trip. Odds are if you like museum ships you want to see all of them while you're in town. So uh, there are more planes in the sea than subs in the sky and yet submarines have altimeters. What's the deal with that? It comes from the end of World War II. Right at the end of the war, Germany came out with a Type 21 U-boat, which stands head and shoulders above what anyone else had. Uh, the American fleet boats were great. They did what Germany could not and were able to completely strangle trade to the islands of Japan, uh, where the U-boats failed to do that to Great Britain. However, this Type 21 U-boat was a step even beyond them. So, at the end of the war, the United States made sure to get some of those boats and some of the technicians who worked on them as reparations. And so the Bakuna you visit today has been modernized from her World War II configuration uh, to a Cold War era hybrid. You see, the problem is, in World War II, uh, these boats could only run their diesel generators while they were on the surface. The diesel engines create uh, CO2 as exhaust. You got to get that off the boat. Can't do that underwater. Uh, and they take in air for their combustion process. So you have to run them on the surface, which means underwater, they're limited to how much uh, power your 252 batteries can store. So uh, the Type 21 U-boats, among a number of other innovations, came up with the idea of a snorkel. Now you know how a snorkel works, you've been snorkeling before. Uh, basically, the submarine has an extra mast similar to a periscope that sticks above water and it is venting CO2 and it is taking in air. So now you can run your diesels underwater. You're going to be a lot louder than you would be uh, with just your uh, batteries running, but your range is uh, much greater than it was under battery power. So now diesel submarines can continue to compete with the nuclear submarines that are coming online. So a World War II boat like this is not completely obsoleted uh, by the new nuclear submarines of the 50s and 60s. So finally getting to the uh, question of why there's an altimeter. Each uh, snorkel has a clapper valve on it. Waves may still break over the top of the snorkel uh, and you most certainly do not salt, want salt water coming down that snorkel mass into the air intakes of your diesel generators and putting out your combustion. Uh, so a wave hits, the clapper valve closes, the wave breaks, and then the clapper valve comes open again. You can see that from the altimeter. For that split second when the valve closes, the diesel generator is getting its air from inside the boat. So the number of atmospheres in the space goes up. Your ears might even pop. Uh, but when that opens again, it'll jump back down as it stops sucking in air from the boat and starts sucking it in from uh, outside. If this jumps and then continues to climb, that means there has been a failure of that clapper valve and the electrician who's manning this position in the maneuvering room, the second to last compartment in the submarine, uh, they have an engine cutoff valve right here. You can stop your diesel generators immediately uh, before you use all your air and suffocate the crew. Many modern diesel submarines don't even need snorkels anymore. Uh, they use liquid uh, gases, liquefied gases, to be able to power their diesels underwater. And this is a relatively new state-of-the-art technology that is making diesel submarines uh, relevant again. Uh, and this system is called an air-independent propulsion system. 
Uh, one of the best examples of this type of boat would be Sweden's Gotland class. Uh, Sweden traditionally has operated a coast defense force and uh, using submarines like this, their force is second to none in the world. What would you rather serve on, a nuclear powered submarine or a diesel electric boat like Pacuna? Let us know in the comments section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State and also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate the support you guys have given us and there's a link in the description if you'd like to continue supporting the work we do. There's also a link for Independent Seaports Museum in case you were interested in supporting the restoration work ongoing on the submarine Pacuna. You can also support our museums by liking, sharing, and subscribing. Both museums have a YouTube channel, so odds are if you like what we do, you'll like the stuff that they put out at an Independent Seaport Museum too, so make sure you uh, subscribe. This video was filmed with uh, content help from my counterpart here, Greg Williams. Greg shows up in all of the Bakuna videos that ISM produces, and uh, he is the submarine manager here. So thank you for your support, Greg.